we are in marketing so i'll i'll talk about how virtual reality is being adopted in the marketing domain and how you can slowly start taking it to your own uh, organizations and also start using in your own businesses as well because because this technology is quite exciting and the kind of applications that i have seen and read about are really amazing that uh, and that has pushed me to do my phd doctorate in 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 this particular field specifically focusing on the tourism sector uh, so with this let me start uh, to give you a little perspective around why we are talking about virtual reality in marketing so if we understand the whole marketing shift that has happened in in last 5 uh, 10 years then initially we you know uh, marketers used to use this push strategy where whatever they created whatever they marketed promoted the consumers were forced to uh, use those products and services and and consume those products and services uh, while now there is a shift that uh, we are seeing that the whole marketing domain is moving towards the pull strategy which is how you can revolve around your consumers and uh, uh, make your products and services and market them as per their choices as per their needs and wants and this is a big shift right consumer becoming becoming center of our universe and we have to uh, really make and promote everything around the consumer is something a marketer has to really look into and then there is a second shift that has happened and which all of us have you know experienced and we are seeing it on a, on on our daily basis the you know morning we get up we have our uh, phone on we are we are checking our linkedin profiles we are checking our facebook pages and and you know insta and other other platforms to see what is happening around us so this whole shift from print advertisement to then moving to tv radio to then digital uh, is actually making consumer much more aware of what is happening around around you know them and how they they are their source of information is changing how they consume information is changing and therefore we are seeing this new uh, area of technology that is coming up in the marketing domain which is your virtual reality augmented reality your ai data analytics and other platforms that are coming and how this is helping the marketing field it is actually making the consumers much more stronger and the association is with brands is even becoming much more stronger so where we used to only read about certain brands products and services to moving towards actually experiencing those brands in real time basis is something you know virtual reality and ar is is offering you so therefore this shift has actually now forced uh, in the last 5 7 years have forced marketers to really see you know how they can actually adopt some of these technologies in their regular activities and how they can really uh, you know work in the larger ecosystem of their business so no more we see that a marketer is working in silos they are collaborating with the sales team they are collaborating with the product team they are collaborating with the research team because now marketing is becoming really a center part of the organization which is becoming a source of information to the other organization departments which are there and we are being in picture really uh, enhances that value really strengthens that function to give much more consumer centered feedback and information to your to your business before i get into actually the applications of virtual reality let me quickly talk about where it has all started from because this will give you a little perspective on that virtual reality is not something which just started in last 5 10 years it has been there for quite long in various forms and shapes and we all need to understand that scientists and researchers have been really working in this space to uh, to really find that area which which will help the business and the marketers to use this technology in a practical manner so if i talk about the origination then first time helig in 1962 created a device called sensorama so it was like an artificial simulator which had everything so it was like creating an artificial environment it had the sound the the view of uh, the you know the uh, air everything related to a, to an artificial environment what it was only lacking was the um, interaction with that environment because now what you see in the virtual reality domain you see uh, we can really interact in that space so the first device sensorama which was created was was really not interactive in nature uh, 
and then later on sutherland created hnd had mounted displays which which you can see from a, a lot of brands out there uh, this was first created by sutherland in 1970 and he actually uh, uh, you know it invented this whole concept of virtual reality devices and in the same in the same year kruger uh, in 1970 developed an environment called uh, video place which was which was like artificial reality but it was interactive in nature so now you can see the shift with healing not having a uh, an interactive environment to sutherland to kruger moving into an environment which is more interactive in nature and then in 1989 jaron lanier actually coined this term called virtual reality he he uh, he was a ceo of epl research and he manufactured uh, goggles gloves and all of vr products at that time but what what was one common thing in that whole time phase from 1962 to 90 90 approximately was everything related to vr was more hardware centric so it was talking about your sensors it was talking about your gloves goggles hmd devices but nowhere uh, it you know how the technology can be used in a practical ap application and what is the other dynamics of virtual reality they were explored so in 1992 stewart actually expanded upon the concept and the definition of virtual reality by introducing two very important terms that have changed the whole way we look at uh, this particular technology he introduced telepresence and presence uh which is actually how you can get immersed into the environment to experience what as what is being shown and all so this whole shift from a technological view of this vr to experiential view has really changed the way now marketers look at this particular technology from research to product testing to product designing to prototyping to marketing communications to advertising uh to uh, training and development you you talk about any domain and vr is used just because uh, you know researchers started looking at this technology from a research point uh, from a from an experiential standpoint and it really helped them to explore the consumer behavior aspect of this particular technology and a lot of research was done around you know why will consumers really buy into an vr buy uh, product or services in a vr environment what will be their behavior into a vr environment and that's why marketers now are leveraging this technology to really bring that experiential immersive nature of technology and use it in in their business and that that is quite evident from the way we are seeing this market is particularly growing uh, so from a latest research report you can you can see that it is uh, the vr market in alone i'm not even talking about the ar market in it the vr market alone is you know will grow at a kgr of around 48.74% if we take the base year of 2020 now why it is happening because there is a lot of adoption and with this covid scenario covid 19 this whole growth has actually even you know got pushed uh, faster so now people are really finding ways on how they can interact with their consumers uh, at their convenience so, you know they are sitting at home how they can create those brand impressions uh, where which where they can interact with their brands they can interact with their products and services and also create that lasting impressions in consumers mind and uh, this was also evident from a u visit survey this was done quite a years back but what uh, the u u visit survey of power brands index they actually assessed forbes 500 brands and and they tried to understand which brands are actually using ar and vr in their marketing domain and 75% of the brands in in that domain are actually uh, in some form or shape using ar and vr in their marketing aspect so you can imagine uh you know uh, how how brands are taking this technology seriously and how marketers are also trying to find out ways that uh, they can leverage this particular technology for their own functions so this is this is an exciting area um uh, that we can see the adoption of hmds is increasing people are getting more familiar with how to use these hmds their prices are coming down so it is becoming more uh you know affordable by the consumers and these changes and these shifts will keep happening and in the next 5 to 10 years we will we will see 
uh, the marketing dynamics will change a lot. You will see mainstream applications of virtual reality in business. You will see how products are made, manufactured, and then shared with consumers. The way that is done is actually changing. So from your movies that you have seen in, in Matrix, which is all created in a virtual environment, hopefully very soon you will see it in a, in a, in a real environment as well. Uh, and that's exciting for me. So uh, now this is a marketing shift that I talked about. The, the prospect of marketing is really amazing. Another factor that will actually push adoption of virtual reality in marketing is the consumer level shift. So if you have read this book called Kotler 4.0, he has, uh, Kotler has mentioned three major shift in, in the consumer's uh, mindset or consumer behavior. The first one is exclusive to inclusive. So the, today the consumer is more connected from horizontal to vertical. Uh, what it means is that consumer is becoming the central part of information to all the businesses, organizations and marketers. Uh, they are becoming their single source of information rather than, uh, you know, they they taking data from, from any other uh, other places. And the last is individual to social. The, the, today's consumer is much more connected as they used to be five to ten years back. Uh, there is nothing that, uh, you know, uh, that, that is making them less aware about any product or services. Uh, whenever they buy or whenever they purchase a product, they do their thorough due diligence, they do information search on, on the web, and they actually have a lot of flat platforms to validate and really build that trust with the brand. So so what how it is impacting like like a marketer like me, right? Because because of these three shifts, you can clearly see that consumer is becoming a central part of any organization, as I said earlier also. So now if, if consumer is becoming a single source of information, if they are more connected and, and we are relying much more uh, uh, than any other sources, we are relying more on the consumers. So therefore, we also have to look at the marketing functions from the consumer's lens. Uh, and therefore, to explain you the adoption of virtual reality in marketing, I have taken that consumer lens. So uh, there is a famous Lotterbonds 4C model, which actually talks about how consumer is at the center of your, should be at the center of universe and whether it is your, uh, your product price, place and promotion getting, uh, uh, you know, replaced by concept like communication, consumers, cost and convenience. So everything is becoming uh, consumer centric, how you can design a product which is as, as for the needs and wants of your consumer. How can you let them consume that product or services at their convenience, whenever they want, wherever they want. Uh, also, how you can make it cost effective from them. So cost effective is not only for me to reduce my cost, but it is also for the consumers on, on reducing their cost of consumption as well. And the last part is communication. So instead of having one-way dialogue with uh, one-way communication with them, how you can have a two-way digital dialogue with your consumers. So in my coming uh, slides, I will talk about these four C's and also give you examples about virtual reality applications uh, across uh, consumer convenience, cost, and communication. So first, talking about the consumer set. So what how, what are we trying to say here? We, we, we are saying that the marketers are actually designing the product and services as per consumers' preference and needs and wants. So it is not anymore like, uh, uh, you know, that we are pushing our product and services. It is we are first trying to understand them and then trying to create a product and services. And you, you you know the typical product development cycle, which it starts from ideation, then it moves to uh, prototyping. At the end, it's the after-sales services that, that we talk about. Now, if I talk about some of the applications of virtual reality across the whole product life cycle domain, then let, let me start with the ideation phase. Now, we are seeing a lot of adoption of virtual reality in the ideation phase. So whether it is your virtual games like Second Life, where brands are putting their presence into those platforms, into those games, and trying to engage with consumers to understand their uh, you know, opinions, to understand their uh, interests and needs and wants, so that they can come to the real life and actually design product or actually invent products 
for which they are seeing need into the virtual environment and games like second life which are virtual reality games actually help us to have a persona which we really want to live so the kind of personality one individual has in second life is much much more closer to a real you know their own self rather than what we see in real life so therefore the kind of feedback marketers are receiving uh, whether you talk about coke merk or ibm or any other larger brand they are all uh, trying to understand consumers from their real you know thought process so therefore the ideation in the ideation phase a lot of brands are using second life and other virtual games to understand their consumers needs and wants much more clearer and there is a brand kimberly clark that you all know about they have actually used virtual reality setup to do product uh, ideation with their own consumers so they have made a virtual reality lab in which on a regular basis they get their consumers to uh, you know uh, find uh, engage with some of their products and try to find out what new they can create in terms of packaging in terms of you know the creatives in terms of the product outline in terms of the depth and the breadth of the product and accordingly then they uh, implement it in the real life they they, they find out the needs and wants and then get into the real life on the other hand kimberly clark is also working with their uh, uh, you know the merchandisers or or the distributors they are helping them to test their product placement into the virtual reality setup so it is actually helping them to uh, we see the how they could stack the product on different shelves how they can actually uh, help them to uh, you know which product should go together how they could place and where they are getting maximum response and how consumers are reacting to their product placement which is actually very very cost effective right so if i go into a supermarket i don't know when it is open 24 by 7 when do i really get time to really check on these product placements and and test out test these really i you know i don't think so we have enough time in in nowadays so therefore a virtual reality lab is something that has really you know changed this whole notion of physical product placement and testing it physically and shifted it to a virtual setup and then once we do the ideation we actually get into the prototyping phase so prototyping is creating a a, a dummy version of your product or service to see how how it how it looks like what are the different functionality and a prominent brand called c actually uh, develops sample product into in virtual reality they create their different parts of the cars in virtual reality and fit them to see how they are coming out together and it has actually saved them 30% time that they usually take to create a physical prototype now 30% time in in a in a car is really really amazing right 30% time per car and when they did this virtual reality prototype they could actually find out around 800 areas of improvement which they could not see in the physical environment because the kind of flexibility that you get your there are multiple designers sitting across different geographies different locations and they all coming together to really uh, uh, you know work on one one single car now imagine in a virtual reality environment they all get connected to their device and they really work on one prototype to, at the, at the convenience of their homes and offices and could give real time feedback on on how the product is looking like how it should be uh, you know as per the consumer feedback and response we are getting whether it is rightly made or not so they could save 30% time and 800 areas of improvement per car which was like an amazing cost it turned out to be an amazing cost saving for them now once we have a prototype we get it into a testing phase before we actually launch it uh now for a testing phase the, this famous example of fedex where they have these drop boxes right so now they wanted to test their drop boxes just imagine if fedex has to test their drop boxes and do it across different locations uh then how many uh, you know drop boxes they would have to create and how much time would it actually take them to test whether uh, th this product is really flaring well for them or not so what they said decided okay let us do it virtually so they set up a virtual environment and actually positioned the uh, the test boxes in the exact location where they wanted them to be so they created a virtual environment for it and with the exact weather conditions 
how the you know usage of the bo- uh, usage of the boxes they tested the real uh, you know product to see how they can make little shifts and changes into into the box so that it suits the end consumers demands and needs and and they could actually save a lot of cost in their whole testing process and not only for that, there are a lot of many brands that are actually using virtual reality as a very very powerful tool to test their products and services a lot of tourism uh, you know hotels and others they really give that experience to understand whether they are lacking in any any aspect before they actually roll out in the real world so and and it saves a lot of time and cost and resources for any any particular organization uh, before they actually roll, roll it out in the real market also imagine you know after so many iteration there is ideation prototyping and testing there is one product that gets formed now if imagine if that product has has one flaw or you know two three flaws and it gets uh, rolled out in the in the market just imagine if that doesn't work well right so uh, how will you actually recall it the cost of recalling a particular product or services is very very huge so therefore a virtual reality testing environment really helps you to take that consumer feedback and understand from them whether this is something which is as per their requirement as per their thought process or not and then uh, we get into finally air de- uh, designing phase so here i will take an example of uh, airbus so airbus actually creates their different as- different parts of an airbus into virtual reality environment before they actually made it so so imagine the kind of cost saving that they do uh, and i i understand these are like all large organizations spending a lot of money into doing it but we are seeing the smaller level application of such uh, uh, you know testing and designing into, into into the smaller brands as well uh, the most exciting one for me uh, is is you know retailing so uh, and this was this was an interesting example for me if i i'm not sure whether you followed this event or not but oneplus actually created a virtual reality uh, store in space so when they were coming up with their new smartphone they did a space launch and they distributed 30000 headsets to all their users using amazon and uh, only those users were privileged to go to space and see the product launch and actually buy the product over there so just imagine the kind of excitement it creates in users mind the kind of uh, uh, you know that privilege kind of uh, sense that uh, you know the consumer gets okay i, I am those among 30000 people who actually could see that this launch one of its kind launch uh, that i'm not sure many would able be uh, be able to see it so uh, and and that actually uh, create a lot of noise around the brand that uh, you know this is amazing so creative so innovative and uh, and the cost for them to do that la- launch was more around creating that environment and those 30000 headset but the kind of roi they, that they got was amazing uh, the the sales were really uh, high after the launch and people were actually waiting for the product because only 30000 products were available and they did a, a big gap in between and then they launched the rest of the uh, you know pieces so there was the real excitement on on buying the product at that time and finally we get into the servicing so after we have you know after sales services is something which is really important in in, in today's world uh, so there's no more because this is an iterative cycle that we see with the consumers that how we can get, let them be engaged with the brand and you know make them our loyal customers rather than they switching to different brand and give them one experience uh, uh you, you know together so in servicing there are a lot of consumer uh, durable brands that actually are thinking of creating a uh, virtual servicing modules that consumers can uh, use and do self servicing so for your smaller issues in your machineries for your smaller issues in your uh, you know equipments and devices at your home you can actually so see those virtual demos and and repair them themselves so the cost saving that happens on the organization part and the and the convenience that the consumer get to really you know quickly uh, repair the product is amazing and boeing actually extensively uses it to repair their uh, uh, you know their aircrafts and um, and it has helped them to save a lot of cost so now moving to the second uh, part of our four c which is on the con- cost side uh, 
so let let me cover the convenient side first so now we understand how uh, you know the product moves from ideation to servicing um, but how virtual reality is actually adding to the convenience part now there is a concept for, is coming up which is called v commerce so we have heard commerce we have heard e commerce now there is a concept which is coming which is called v commerce which is virtual commerce where you can actually get into a virtual store try a particular product or service on your avatar and then see whether it fits or not now just imagine you can currently with this whole online commerce uh, you know booming and because of covid again giving it a, a little bit push over there you can imagine uh, you know e-commerce helping consumers to really try an outfit outfit and take a real time experience and real time uh, feedback on the product how it will boost the retail industry and and just at the convenience of their own homes and places they need not travel anywhere uh, just from their laptop they can do all these things and that saves them a lot of time uh, uh, right so instead of me being part of that traffic jam going from one mall to the other it, it is such a hard task but with virtual reality it actually is uh, moving the retail organizations into this concept of e-commerce while we, we are a little far off from that whole idea but yes a lot of amazon has le- uh, recently patented a mirror uh, which which helps you to create your imagery and uh, test the product amazon product on yourself so uh, brands are actually investing and going into that direction also uh this whole concept of contextual shift so for example if you are going for a shopping and you are going for a beach holiday and you really want to experience how these product and services will look on me you can with virtual reality you can give them that contextual shift uh so if i am coming for uh, you know any shopping related to my beach holiday i can actually get into immersed into an environment which is so close to the uh, beach and see how this particular product and uh, 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 you know will will look on me or how uh, how 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 what's the experience that that i have for this particular uh, product or services so that contextual shift is something we don't get in real life but yes with virtual reality that's definitely one area that brands are really excited about so for example if you are into perfumes and you give them uh, to uh, you know uh, experience your perfume and the kind of aura that you create around them is something you are taking them to egypt or taking them them to some exotic location which is closer to the smell of the perfume and imagine the kind of uh, sales then that a brand will have so this contextual shift is something a lot of brands are getting excited about and finally from a convenience perspective it's a trust that a consumer builds on the brand they get what they feel and what they see it is it is not something which is uh, they have to go by product description or service description something they can really really experience now from a convenience aspect we are seeing a lot of adoption in the tourism industry right how can you make your next tour uh, decision bases the uh, the virtual tour that you have gone through so maybe you want to travel to some museum or or travel to some uh, you know a unique place that that you are looking to uh, travel to but just have that experience have that demo using a virtual reality experience and the and and the sense that you will get on what you will experience at that particular location will be much more closer than what you see in the pictures and also uh, a lot of hotels are giving those virtual tours of their brand to to take you through that whole rich a uh, journey of of their hotel and and you know that experience so that consumers are much more connected and when they reach to the exact location they they get what they see uh through the virtual tours so let's let me talk next about the communication aspect which is the marketing communication advertising and and the branding side now this is something i am i really get excited about because the kind of avenues virtual reality gives you to uh, in the communication uh, arena is amazing and these are quite practical uh, quite uh, brands are use implementing it so these are not far off these are things that are already happening so if any examples you get inspired by you can use it in your organization or on your next marketing campaign now um, so what is so the commu- the most important part of the communication uh, area is how you can create that digital dialogue with your consumers 
so it is not only about uh, you know hearing them it is also about on a real time basis how brands can also interact with the consumers their queries their questions their experience are instantly getting answered rather than they waiting for any response from the rep- brand representative or or the you know customer executive representative so there is this uh, brand called record like uh, Uh, what they did uh, to connect with their consumers they created a virtual sweden in london uh, so they were launching these unique uh, drinks and and the uh, and the kind of exotic fruits and and flavors because it's a sweden brand they really wanted to create that environment of uh, of the place so they created for 6 days they created a virtual sweden in london and uh, the the consumers were coming experiencing the environment and also testing their uh, uh, you know the key uh, drinks that they were planning to launch in the market and then getting their feedback so this is an amazing way to connect with your consumers and something that you have must have seen on uh, you know very regularly is this platform called spatial which actually helps you to connect with your consumers connect with your clients connect with your uh uh you know the whole department and different parts of the organization in a virtual environment so in spatial you can actually create your avatar and then uh you know conduct meetings conduct workshops conduct virtual events virtual program i would have loved to give this presentation in that virtual environment but sometime yes uh you, you know uh, technology plays a different angle uh but this is an ex- amazing amazing uh, you know technology that all of you should explore and very simple to use you use your picture to create your avatar and then create any environment to give any virtual presentation so for your next presentation you can look at creating something very exciting so that you know people are really interested and why, see why these things are becoming important because the digital fatigue is setting in we the kind of events webinars everything happening on online basis we are not getting to interact with people Uh, spend in some parts of the countries uh, you know it takes a toll on on consumers therefore they are looking for these interactive and engaging way to uh, experience brand experience uh, uh, what the brand has to offer and then um, not only on connecting with the consumers also showing the uh, your csr part of any organization so there is a shoe brand called toms and uh, they they do a campaign on give away campaign where any uh, customer can give one pair of their shoe to you know children in need uh, and so the consumers were re- must be kept skeptical whether my shoes are really reaching to the you know to the end consumers or not so they created a virtual reality environment where those consumers can actually see uh, where their product is uh, or their giveaway is going how it is being used in in which parts of the uh, geographies and how kids are really excited and happy to Uh, to wear those shoes and and uh, you know have that experience so and this again built a lot of trust with their cu- uh, customers right because they could see where their uh, uh, whatever they are giving away where their that is going how it is being used so that kind of trust is irreplaceable and a lot of brands uh, in addition to norms are are using virtual reality for it now there is interesting concept which is coming uh, uh, that makes Uh, so we are not saying that now in next five to ten years everything will become virtual reality. We are not saying that, but there will be very uh, modified models of brands that that we will see uh, in in the coming years. And currently, we see primarily three type of brands which are coming up. So the first one is the proto brand. What what are proto brand? Proto brands are brands which are purely present in in the virtual environment setup. Uh, so if you have seen that game called grand theft auto they have a very famous drink called sprung uh, and then there is uh, this e cola now you can see this brand specifically into the game there are billboards everywhere it is being branded like as it is a real product so when you play that game you see advertisement of this product everywhere so now and and that has actually become a brand in itself so anybody wants to leverage it and get into the uh you know the real life that will be interesting right but uh that's proto brand that's only present virtual in computer synthesized environments uh in your games in your entertainment part of the uh, uh, uh the uh, virtual reality then there are hyper real brands hyper real brands are both present virtually 
and they are present in real life as well so a starwood hotels they were launching uh, their chain of uh, hotels called aloft so before they could launch it in real world they launched it in virtual world and they actually uh, tested it took customer feedback Uh, took their views and opinions on how they can further improve it and after incorporating all those suggestions and seeing what is the response they were getting from customers they did a real launch in 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 the real environment so that's again amazing use of virtual reality for launching uh, with with customer feedback and then there are brands called triple play brands which are in your uh, virtual these are in your uh, real life also and they are into the fictional view as well so so one brand that everybody talks about is harry potter now harry potter is there there is a book there is a movie and there is a game also so uh, again it is present but there is a specific product uh, that is there in uh, uh, for uh, for harry potter there is a sp- uh, specific uh, candy which is which is there uh, i'm forgetting the name of the candy but yes that candy is there in the movie that is there in the uh, book that is there in real life also so that candy is actually quite famous and consumed by consumers so how they have actually given that vir- virtuous experience to their consumers so wherever they get, go they will actually have a harry potter experience coming to uh, their view so this is again amazing to give that 360 degree omni channel presence uh, to your customers and helping them connect with you across various platforms so while virtual reality is not your primary platform but again it becomes an important one to really tap onto that audience also uh, when when your brand is concerned and then there is uh, uh, from a promotion communication aspect these are the two examples that i would like to share so new york times they do these virtual stories uh where whether it is an isis war or whether it is somebody going to space they create these virtual stories and they distribute these cardboard based virtual goggles so if if anybody is actually reading those stories they are get into that environment and see how it is like you know if somebody is going to space then how it must this must have felt uh and that's an amazing use of journalism plus your uh, virtual reality and then there is a uh, jaguar uh, which which has used virtual reality to really create that unique experience in in the consumer's mind where uh, people uh, came into a jaguar car then they traveled across the wimbledon court uh, so close to the player andy murray who was playing at that time that they could you know interact with the players and then move out of the stadium to the car which is again a great brand recall that they could get using virtual reality so these are some of the examples that marketers are using when uh, virtual reality is concerned from a communication standpoint and uh, i hope uh, this is some inspiration for all of us to use it in our own uh, space of life now uh, but now coming to the last c of uh, our 4c which is the cost uh through various examples and i have again and again mentioned about it cost is a very big factor while there is certain uh, apprehension in consumers mind stating that uh, uh you know it is very expensive the hmd devices are very expensive and i agree to all those apprehensions uh but still technology is evolving a lot and at a very rapid pace so instead of we waiting for time when uh you know the virtual reality cost is actually affordable to everybody then uh i don't think so that will be the right approach if we can test and use it in some form or shape in our existing marketing campaign and see how our consumers are reacting to it and maybe there are better ways to uh, uh you know to uh, conduct your existing marketing activities in a virtual environment than than in the and this is the you know this is the right time when everybody is at home we are all getting ad, uh, you know adapted to these new digital communication platforms uh most of our calls experiences can you know conversations are happening virtually so why can't we use that particular thing to uh see how our consumers are reacting to it and then in addition to that you have seen that in testing the designing prototyping virtual reality gives you a lot of cost saving uh and some some of the examples that i will talk to you about uh here so now at last talking about some of the success stories of virtual realities these are real stories that brands have adopted uh, uh, conquered 
and actually uh, got a lot of success about from virtual reality in their whole marketing product development and 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 you know business organizations so uh, talking about the first example cis um, crp so this is uh, into the clinical research organization they were all always doing this virtual uh, they were doing health fair in person health fair live health fair but because of covid they could not do it uh, but they did not stop they conducted the health fair virtually uh, with all the sponsors and attendees as same as they were having last year uh even more excitement because it was coming through a virtual reality platform and once the event was concluded they could see 40% reduction in their overall event cost which is like huge right somebody saying 40% cost reduction in their overall marketing event cost which is which is like immense everybody will jump onto it the second is from a b2b space uh, uh, uh rico where they are into heavy printing machinery uh, setup so there one machine is approximately somewhere around uh, you know if 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 an organization invest into their machinery it's almost like a 2 million dollar kind of investment that goes into it now and these are so huge that they they were doing around 6 to 7 trade shows or demo shows with their prospective clients and for each machinery at one event it used to cost them around 150000 dollars so per printer and per event that was the cost that they were having now not because of covid but they generally were thinking how they can reduce this cost because 150000 dollars per event and they were doing 6 to 7 event it is it was like a huge cost for the organization so what they they created a virtual demo of their product and so they could not so uh, and they started connecting with their consumers to give them the virtual demo of the real product and that helped them to cut that cost of uh, you know the events that they were doing in person and which was like a big investment and their kind of sales did not drop also uh, so which is again a very valid proof of uh, how virtual reality can be used for your product demos in your trade shows in your demos and and you know other marketing activities then there is uh, uh, you know there are a lot of examples then if you talk about uh, fendi as a brand then uh, they were uh, it's it's an expensive product brand right so for them theft was a major issue uh, some of the uh, you know Uh, people coming and and taking away their products without paying for them it was a big issue for them so they actually created a virtual training for all their employees to give them scenarios and situations and how they should react in those scenarios so which is which is something amazing for for all the employees to really learn uh, practically on how these scenarios can span out and how they should react into it uh, so they they could see 55% reduction in their overall theft um and on the training part there was a 400% roi the kind of returns they were the people who were joining the excitement that was built was amazing for them and the last example i would like to talk about about this uh, safran which is into uh, airbus uh, there was a nasus product that they make for airbus now they got a big offer from airbus and their uh, you know the time that was given to them was 42 weeks so they were really skeptical because typically it takes around 60 weeks for them to do that 60 months sorry 60 months to make make one nasus for for the airbus so they uh, they what they did they used virtual reality to create the whole product uh, they they try to see which part uh, for which part which other tooling do we need and so through this process they could actually uh, reduce a lot of over cost so for example if they know this particular tool will be relevant here they would only buy that because it is virtually tested now so with virtual prototype and virtual product development they could finally deliver the product in the in the super 42 months which was super quick for some for an organization to develop and uh, with 10% you know cost saving on the tooling budget so now they are looking at adopting virtual reality for their you know other products as well uh because yes the car kind of cost saving that it gave them was uh, amazing so at the end i would like to say see these are some of the examples we could see from larger brands and organizations using it but on a practical basis if we talk about tourism as a sector if we talk about retail as a sector healthcare as a sector 
right? We could see a lot of adoption of virtual realities in these particular sectors, um, from your virtual tours to demos to your virtual experiences. Uh, a lot of governments, um, organizations, and associations are are planning to come up uh, with something exciting that will help them push their uh, you know product and services in these COVID environment and scenarios. So with that thought, um, I leave you to test it. Uh, see how you can excite you can make some exciting implementations in your organizations and uh, yeah uh, thanks thanks Kenneth I'm happy to have any questions now so I have a question here from Alethea uh, if you are interested in moving I'm going to kind of paraphrase but if you're wanting to figure out a way as a marketer uh, I'm trying to see how she wrote this how to get involved in this and move it forward within your brand. You don't necessarily have to be a, you know, for lack of a bright phrase, an IBM or some massive technology brand. How do you start getting involved in in helping create a VR movement, if you will, in your brand? Where do you start? So we always have to start small because we really have to test sure. this technology from a consumer standpoint, right? So even if you talk about, uh, you know, your car manufacturers like Merck, Audi and others, they were all testing virtual, you know, car test drive. That was a small start for them. So for a smaller brand or for any organization, these are the things that somebody has to look for. For example, if you're doing an event, right? If you're doing an event, how you can make a virtual event out of it. If you are selling your product, which are uh, either in the retail, jewelry, uh, side how can you give a virtual experience to your clients to test some of these products uh, virtually then some of the examples if, if you are into a b2b space and you have a lot of uh, labs or factories or you know these as a demo how you can create virtual demos of these sites and and these places to really excite your clients so there are very smaller applications of virtual reality as well which which we see uh, and and you can start from as small as doing a virtual communication. So how can you make your next communication virtual? This is as small as it, it, it can go, right? To as big as how you can develop a product virtually. Okay. So uh, give me a quick answer on this as we close out. Last question from Sherry. How do you overcome the high development costs of implementing VR and V-commerce? Yes, so the development cost is, is high, but there are a lot of tools uh, that are coming up which actually assist you in, in, in getting into the e-commerce or the retail side. Uh, what I believe is that if an organization takes take these things internally rather than you know working with a lot of external vendors because that increases the cost for them, if you have a few CAD designers and if you have a few you know 3D artists and others, you can start small in your within your own organization by starting it for one product line, which, for example, if you're doing sunglasses or if you're doing hats or if you are doing some neck pieces, can you start with these rather than going to it for your entire product line? And some of these specific skill set, if you can hire them within your organization and see how it is spanning out, that will reduce a lot of cost for you. Also, there are uh, a lot of startups are there in this whole ecosystem that help you to uh, get a ready-made product for all these things. So you just have to give them their product and they help you to create those virtual demos. So that's another way to explore uh, this whole virtual retail aspect as well. Very good. Well, Nidhi, again, yes. thank you so very much. I really appreciate you being part of, of Digimark on APAC. Uh, it was a pleasure to get to meet you this way and we'll look forward to meeting you in person and not virtual reality someday soon.